And you go, okay, well, we're going to get up at 1 o'clock. We're going to head to the radio station. We'll all hop. We got the Avalanche, you know, the Chevrolet Avalanche. It's not all-wheel drive, but it's got the traction control yeah. on it. It'll be so 9.30. That looks okay. You know, I went down to the lobby. I'm scoping it out. 1 o'clock rolls around. Those doors fly open at the Crystal Lake Holiday Inn. A blast of wind hits me in the face. And I'm up <laughs> almost to my waist in snow drifts trying to get through to the parking lot. Uh, not kidding around. So I trudge to the truck. Not a lot of snow on your car. If you parked outside, because the wind is so massive. Yeah. Right. It's, it's just not blowing sticking. it off. Yeah. Right. It's drifting on the side of it. That's one thing. I start the truck up. I start to go a little bit. I get maybe in 10 or 15 minutes about 30 feet to a plowed section of the parking lot. And it was drifting everywhere else. Well, the entrance was about, uh, oh, I don't know, four feet of snow. Oh. We couldn't get through. The plows were done because they're not going to keep going, keep going. They, f- they figure who's leaving at 1 o'clock in the morning yeah. from a blizzard. I'm not going to fault them on that point. Uh, I call Tina. And what did I say to you, <laughs> Tina, on the phone call? Go ahead. Um, I literally just woke up and you're like, you need to get dressed. You need to get down here right now. We need to go. We, we got to find somebody to drive us. We're not going to make it. I said we <laughs> will not. We will not uh, not be on the air because we had, you know, I feel like we said we're going to be on the air at 4 o'clock in the morning. We're going to have closures and everything going on, uh, which, by the way, those that list continues. Star105.com. You put in the keyword snow day. Thanks again to our friends at Adams Collision Centers. I imagine they're going to have some business after some of the little fender benders and people sliding into ditches um, in the past however many hours. So Tina is in the lobby. Jeff comes out. He's trying to move the other vehicle. Not happening. Meanwhile, I talked to a couple of people that had plows that couldn't give us a ride. Finally, we find a guy that can give us a ride. Chris and his friend Paul. And uh, they give us a start driving us. Okay. And we get to right around McHenry County College. There's like a little entrance to it, we could barely see the road. Oh, I mean, yeah. We no. really, we all were nervous. We were going, you know, I mean, really, I didn't think my initial thing after dealing with our truck is we're not going to make it to the station today. It's not going to happen. Uh-huh. I was disappointed. I was mad at myself because I didn't sleep here because I wanted to be on the air. It was just, you know, a whole thing. So we find a guy that's going to drive us and we pass Ridgefield, which is uh, just past 176 on 14, headed to Woodstock to Route 47. And uh, there's a police officer with his lights on. We didn't know what was going on. We get about about half mile past Ridgefield, there's a 20 foot truck sideways blocking both directions of Route 14. Uh, our initial reaction, what would you say that was at that point? We're like, what? It was ghostly. <laughs> it it was scary. ghostly. It was scary. It was like we were in a movie. Yeah. It yeah. really was. And, you know, Chris, this driver, is doing his thing. He turns around, goes back. We go the back way on Ridgefield, which <laughs> a lot of open area. I mean, a lot of farmland and a lot of big drifts. We could barely see the road. We almost went off the road a couple of times. He's driving. He's got the plow. He's got the four-wheel drive. We get to the entrance right before the radio station. We get stuck in about a four-foot drift. I'm talking, we couldn't open the doors on the car. That's how deep it was. Couldn't even get out to check it out. And and, like We're not being dramatic. We're going, whoa, we're stuck now. Mm -hmm. Another plow guy comes. The guy, Pedro from S&P, our hero. Okay, another guy. An angel. He tries to, Pedro, an angel (laughs) on our shoulder. He tries to get us into the lot right by the firefighter facility, the training facility here by McHenry County College. He misses and goes into the ditch. Jeff, literally, the truck is sideways (laughs) leaning to the right. Picture it. We're scrunched in this cab. I could stick my hand out the window and put... It it was snow. And it was snow. That's how tilted we were. I was like, Jeff, just plop out into the snow, buddy. And you were like, okay, let's do it. Let's go out. You know, Tina's practically sitting on Pedro's lap, okay? Because we're scrunched into the cab of this pickup truck. And and this is the story we're going to be telling people for a lot of years to come. And I know you might have a story similar. If you want to hit us up, 800-861-1055, 800-861-1055. Got about 200 yards to the front door of the radio station. We decide we're going to bail here. Pedro goes, man, no, no thanks. I'll wait. I got a guy coming who's going to pull me out. Thanks for the uh, offer to walk in four-foot drifts. So I go first <laughs> only because, I don't know, I got out of the truck. I gave Tina my gloves. You Look did. At, I'm pointing out. I gave I Tina my gloves. Jeff takes, Tina's got enough. <laughs> yeah. She's got enough bags. You ever see the movie Spaceballs? Yeah. Where Princess yeah. Dridia, whatever, has like 90 pieces of luggage? <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah. Did you 
to pack, woman. <laughs> I had to pack different outfits. I didn't know For what was what? <laughs> <laughs> It's snowpocalypse. But it was just in case. Oh, I think she's got it. three different pairs of boots. Yeah. <laughs> three different styles. <laughs> so, uh, so I get out, and uh, my pants are already all messed up. Mm. Like, I'm freezing. They're wet. That's what was making me nervous. I was getting cold, man. Uh, so I start trudging toward the station. It's I'm, I had to take my inhaler when I got in. I don't know if you yeah. guys saw my asthma. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, because this is not a good time to have an emergency. There's not going to be one <laughs> no. emergency vehicle that's no. going to get me. I mean, I love this place, but I don't want to die here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like no. the station. And uh, so I, I know this is a long-winded story, but it's just entertaining because, man, we really went through uh, to get to that snow and then get to the station. We got settled. We were on the air by about 340 telling people, don't drive. <laughs> just don't do it whatsoever. And when we say don't drive, we mean we just spent two hours on a normally 15-minute yeah. drive <laughs> risking our lives <laughs> to get here. And we want to get you the info. I did give you guys the option. I said, look, if you want to stay at the hotel, that's fine. All I can picture, Jeff's mom, who packed him this uh, great bag of goodies that I'm oh wearing. My I'm wearing a pair of Jeff's pants right now. What would we do without <laughs> that, Joe? We have crossed- and I dog- her for it. We have crossed a line, <laughs> Thanks, job. Mama T. And I'm not wearing underwear either. <laughs> right, I'm, hey. kidding. I'm kidding about that. You can keep those. I'm kidding. <laughs> I like your new jeans. So we're not kidding about that. And uh, I'm picturing Tina's mom, Barb, going, what are you making my daughter do? What are you making your my daughter do? And so here we are, safe and sound. We got enough food, I think, to last us. So I don't think we're going to get out of here today. Um, so th- that's our story.